Kia ora, ko Alice toko ingoa. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my wrap up for June. And you can see I'm in a different spot because this pile is pretty high <laughs> and it's just a bit daunting to move it from its current spot. So here we go. In June I finished a total of 26 seven books I'm pretty sure if I've counted correctly. Always off with my count to be honest and of that the majority was from my personal TBR. I did haul some books so we'll do the haul first. Um, otherwise yeah I will just give you this month my ratings. Um, let's get on in with the haul first. I already broke that I'm only gonna buy five books this month but I did read all but one of them so I'm not upset about that. As you can see I hauled a few books. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> the first two are books I've actually already read and they were a birthday gift and early on for my brother. Um, I have Thrawn, Alliances by Timothy Zahn and then Thrawn, Treason, Tre Treason, these sort of Star Wars books. I love Thrawn, my brother got these for my birthday, he has also read them, he read my birthday presents. But yeah, those are the first two and also I actually hauled this a little while ago and my brother told me <laughs> that he bought this for me, so I am going to unhaul that one. So that's the first two which don't really count because they were gifts. The next ones I have read, but still bad because I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books and I don't need to be at five. Um, I have Waking Romeo by Catherine Barker, which is going to go on my red pile. One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, which I actually enjoyed. You'll see more about that later. Colour Outside the Lines, um, edited by Sangu Madana. This is a collection of short stories anthology. Um, yesterday I hauled the ones we were meant to find. This is a science fiction. I thought to myself, if I get it now, I will not miss out on it and I really wanted to read it so that's how I got that one. Um, and then these three I haven't read. Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagada. Um, this is contemporary, it is on my July TBR which has already gone up so if you haven't seen that check out that video now. I also hauled because I started joining Book of the Month which is a hassle on its own. I won't get my next books for a little while because I went for the cheaper shipping um, to New Zealand. I got Project How Mary by Andy Weir which I was already going to buy anyway so you know. And then I also got Things We Lost to the Water by Eric Nguyen. Um, these are both on my July TBR. So it is a good thing that the books I hauled are already on my TBR. It's just bad that I've not picked up other books I already had. But anyway, um, now into my wrap up of 27 books, starting with my ARCs and my ebooks and my audiobooks. I have my laptop here. So there are a few books on my physical pile that I did read as audiobooks. So I will do those at the end of this. First of all, I'm just going to start with books I don't currently own or have in my possession. My camera battery is going to die soon, so I will try to get through a few. I am just going to give you the rating for these ones, uh, because some of them are a bit hard for me to talk about. Uh, the first one is I Hope You're Listening by Tom Ryan. This is a thriller mystery. I read it at four stars. I listened to it as an audiobook on my drive back from Auckland when Byron and I came back from our trip from Christchurch. The next book is a library book that I had to take back. That is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This is a middle grade fantasy novel about a girl who is put in the forest because every year they sacrifice a child to the witch and the thing is the witch isn't actually like stealing the children. She takes the children across the forest to this other town and then adopts them out. But this child she has accidentally um, given moonlight instead of starlight and so she keeps her as her own child and raises her. I only rate it 3.5 stars because I'm not the biggest fan of middle grade but I think that if you are then you'll definitely enjoy this one. The next book was sent to me as an arc and that is Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. I read this one 4.5 out of 5. I absolutely love Nicola Yoon's books. This is a contemporary with a little bit of magical realism in it. It is a romance but it's like a sad romance which Nicola Yoon really does well at. It is also an interracial romance which I really enjoyed. I totally recommend picking this one up. I would like to buy a physical copy at some point but I just haven't got around to it because I'm not meant to be buying books. The next book is Persephone Station by Stina Licht. I don't know if I said that name right. This is a science fiction um, dystopian-esque story. It is set in space and on this planet and this um, space station called Persephone Station. It includes a non-binary main character as well as a good amount of representation however the story had a few flaws in it and it meant that I only rated it 4 out of 5. I was really looking forward to it. This has been like one of my most anticipated books. I requested an arc and I got rejected which is fine. <laughs> 
Um, I'm kind of glad that I actually ended up listening to the audiobook instead of reading the physical book because I think that if I'd read the physical ebook I probably would have enjoyed it less. Um, if you're a fan of like, I don't know why, but it gave me like Mad Max vibes but it's not really the same thing. Or just any general science fiction like Altered Carbon or um, can't really think of any other ones. <laughs> I think you might enjoy this one. Um, just keep in mind that there isn't as much exploration into the world as I was hoping for. I read quite a few arcs this month, especially a few um, e-arc graphic novels. The first one was Beckstar by... Ooh, I can't remember the author's name. This one wasn't very good. I only rated it two stars, I'm pretty sure. It is a science fiction girl gang sort of thing. Sort of has similar vibes to Aurora Rising in some ways, but in other ways it doesn't have enough world building and character depth for it to really be like any other books. I probably wouldn't recommend this one unless you want something fun. Uh, but if you like to get to know your characters, this isn't the one for you. I also read the graphic novel The Whole Series Livewire by Vita Alaya. Alaya? Al I don't know. Um, this is a also science fiction um, graphic novel series. It features a main character who is a superhero who can hack into things but like is actually part of the main frame. I don't know how to describe her. Um, it has some really good representation and has some comments on racism. However, I think that the story wasn't as fun as I was hoping and was only slightly interesting. I ended up rating this one four stars but I'd say it's quite a low four stars. It wasn't bad enough to be a 3.5 but wasn't good enough to be uh, any higher um, so I ended up rating it 4. That's partially because I don't do like quarter ratings and I think if I did quarter ratings it would be a 3.75. The last um, ebook graphic novel I read was Love 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 by Kid Toussaint. Uh, this is originally a French graphic novel translated into English and that's why it is an art because it's actually been out for a while. It is also a science fiction. If you can tell, I like science fiction. And it is about a robot who falls in love with a human but it's illegal to do that and some other stuff happens and then there's an uprising by robots. I loved the concept of this and loved the ideas behind it but the art style wasn't my favourite. It kind of had like Betty Boop-esque stuff and I'm not a very big fan of that. And also the storyline, it moved too fast for the first like edition, How do you, the first volume, first chapter, I don't know. Um, and so I think that if it had been a bit slower and they'd spent more time getting to know the characters I probably would have rated it higher but I only rated it 2.5 out of 5. The next ebook arc I read was A Mountain of Evidence by Amy Lewis. This is kind of similar to Orphan X but not the same. I would just say it has similar vibes. However, I think it wasn't very good. Um, it's about a character who moves to the small town and helps to uncover the murder of a girl. However, it was just really long and had very long passages of um, no dialogue and monologue like explaining things and I found it very hard to follow at times. I felt like the character, the main character, Kim, had no dimension whatsoever and so I couldn't tell you anything about her personality which I think is really important that you get to know the main character especially in books that are more like thriller, mystery, um, crime solving ones. It's always good to know your character to some degree because then you can understand how they think. However, um, Kim was made out to be like a really cool uh, badass woman but I don't think she really was in the end. She just had no personality and I think that's not very good. I only rated it on two stars. The next audiobook I listened to this month in June was She's Too Pretty to Burn. This one is a contemporary thriller based around a girl who becomes in a relationship becomes starts a relationship with this other girl and she has a big fear of taking photos and this other girl's a photographer and they bond over that but then things in her life start to spiral and she ends up getting involved with the wrong crowd which her friend her girlfriend really was involved in the wrong crowd but like even more so um, I really like this it was really fun and enjoyable super good like vibes I don't know how to describe that um, I would say it's very similar in ways to Rory Powers writing style however without the uh, fantasy or science fiction element of it however the way it ended I wasn't the biggest fan of and because of uh, because of that I would probably dock points however I did rate this one 5 out of 5 I would definitely recommend it especially if you're into thriller books the very final book that I do not have access to is Dear Justice by Nick Stone this is the second book in the um, Dear Martin duology. It wasn't actually really 
like originally meant to be a duology but Nick had this idea come to her and she ended up writing this. I listened to this as an audiobook and it's been on my radar since it came out but I haven't felt the need to really buy it and pick it up so I'm glad I was able to find it as an audiobook. This wasn't my favourite. I definitely enjoyed Dear Martin a lot more however I would say it was quite interesting and very hard hitting and educational and because of that I would definitely pick it up if you're into Black Lives Matter movement and reading about that for example The Hate You Give or Not So Pure and Simple uh, those are just a few books that come to the top of my mind I rated Dear Justice 4 out of 5 now moving on to my physical stack and we're just going to go down because it's easier than me going through order so the last book I finished was The Ones We Meant to Find by Joan Lee this is a science fiction dystopian story about two sisters who are no longer together I don't know how to describe it otherwise um, one sister is on this island and she's been there for three years trapped alone and the other one is trying to figure out what happened to her sister. This is actually told in two different timelines which you don't find out until towards the end but it is what a lot of people talk about um, and it is quite easy to figure out what you do find out quite early on because you figured it out quite early on but I would say going into that keep that in mind because it is a bit confusing. Um, I rated this one 4 out of 5 in the end. I really enjoyed it and this cover is beautiful uh, but don't be confused by the cover. It is not contemporary or fantasy. It is science fiction. The next book I finished. Oh on this pile is Color Outside the Lines edited by Sangu Madana. This is a collection of short stories about interracial love. It has a little bit of LGBT rep but mostly straight couples. There are quite a few stories in here that are definitely very interesting and worth picking up but a few that weren't. Overall I rated it 4 stars. Um, I think my rating actually came out to like 3.8. There were a few stories I didn't love and a few from authors that I unexpectedly really enjoyed. I definitely recommend picking it up if you're into um, international romances and like seeing more variety in your romances. The next book was One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston and this one I actually really enjoyed. Um, if you didn't know I did not like Red, White and Royal Blue. I just I think I think that the um, politics in that made me not like it very much and so I was worried going to this it was the writing style but now that I've finished this book I know it was definitely the content of that book versus this one. This one is a romance between two girls. One of them is stuck in time on a train from the 70s uh, but they don't realise for a little bit but it does tell you at the end or not at the end like in the beginning. <laughs> it is a female female sapphic romance. I really enjoyed it. There is a bit of public sex related items which is a bit weird uh, but overall I rated this one 5 out of 5. I am excited actually to see what Casey McQuiston comes out with next because I think I will pick it up. I was worried that this will be the decider of whether or not I continue reading her books and I think I will. The next book is Waking Romeo by Catherine Barker. This is a science fiction retelling of Romeo and Juliet with time travel. I think the thing about time travel is it's quite messy and because of that I didn't end up enjoying this book as much as I was hoping. I think I rated it 3.5 out of 5. Um, I'd say that the characters were a little bit one dimensional at times and because of that it just wasn't as fun as I was hoping and it got a little bit messy with the time travel which is something that you always have to take note of with time travel science fiction. The reason why I'm filming this wrap up like way before the end of the June which is it's like the 27th today but I don't think I'll finish too many more books this month. I may finish one. Uh, it's because I had to return this book to the library. This is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. It is a romance with a little bit of science fiction in it but mostly just romance contemporary about this equation thing that tells you whether or not you'd be a perfect match. Um, the main character gets matched with someone and they're like the best match that they've ever had and so they start a romance. Um, I just think that it was really slow in the beginning and it made me lose interest and by the time that the couple finally got together I didn't really care about it and because of that I only rated this one 3.5 out of 5. The next book was one I actually listened to as an audiobook. This is Picard The Last Best Hope by Una McCormack. This is a prequel into the Picard TV series which was released I think last year maybe the year before which is set in the future of Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, John Luke Picard is the captain in that, if you did not know, played by Patrick Stewart, so yep. Uh, this gave a little bit of insight into the happenings of the TV show, however the show itself wasn't very good and because of that this book wasn't very good. I rated it 2.5 out of 5 I'm pretty sure. The next book I finished was Poison Study by Maria V. Schneider. This is the first book in the Poison Study series I think is the name. The study series, I don't know. Um, this book was okay, just okay. It has been on my TV out for a little while now, since I think December last year. But in the end, I just didn't love it. I didn't realize that the romance, like the 
love interest was actually a young man. I thought he was an old dude, like a monk. So that was a bit of confusion towards the end when they finally got together. I was like, ah, he's not old. Oh, I'm confused now. Um, overall, I think that I'm just a bit too late to the party with this one. I think if I was 16 again, I would definitely love this book. But because I'm in my nearly mid-twenties, I did not love it. And because of that, I rated it 3 out of 5. A book I was really looking forward to this month, and I'm so glad I finally read it, is Time of Our Lives by um, Emily Wibberley and Austin Siegman Brooker. I can't remember the author's names because there's two of them. These two are a couple and they write romances about first chance love and uh, just general cuteness. This was very fun. It is about two characters. One who wants to live near home because his mum has dementia or Alzheimer's, one of the two. And the other one who wants to leave home um, because she's so sick of being part of this big family and never having time to her own. They're both on a college tour and they meet by chance and then they meet by chance another time. Overall super fun, super enjoyable, really fun romance. I think I rated it 4 out of 5. It wasn't like hard hitting. I'd say if you enjoyed Two of the Boys I Loved Before or anything in that sort of realm you probably enjoyed this one. I also read The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. This is a contemporary kind of historical fiction but not really because it's only set in like the 80s or 90s about uh, Cameron Post who is a most likely lesbian I'm pretty sure she is and um, has been sent to this Christian camp to deal with that but in saying that that's what it says it is and that's what the trailer for the movie says it is but the majority of it is her life leading up to that and that only takes up a small portion of the book a lot of it is just dealing with the grief of losing her parents at a young age and never really getting to let go and tell them about her and her life and because of that I think that the synopsis and the movie trailer which I know you shouldn't base a book off the movie trailer was a bit misleading I think I only rated this one 3 out of 5 maybe 3.5 out of 5 but I'm glad I finally read it because it was daunting I picked this up on a whim and I was like if I don't pick it up now I'm probably never going to pick it up I read Killer Kingdom by Alexandra Christo as part of a secret TBR which I'm still working on and I'll be making more work on it in July <laughs> this one is a fantasy sort of the Little Mermaid retelling um, but it wasn't very good in my opinion. I can see why it's hyped. I think if you are into sea related stuff then you'd enjoy this because I am scared of the sea. I did not really enjoy this. I only rated it 3 out of 5 but it was just alright. Um, I definitely recommend it to a younger audience or people who like reading a younger audience book. A book I very much unexpectedly but also expectedly love is Pretty Little Savage by Lucy Smoke. This is a dark romance. It is about this girl who gets expelled from school and instead gets sent to this like university sort of place to start studying in order to stay off the street. Her mother is a terrible person. She has been sexually abused. It is a dark romance so I definitely would not pick it like I would not recommend picking this up unless you're okay with dark themes such as sexual abuse. Um, there's some foul language in this which is probably not language I would personally use for myself and I'd never write for myself but it suits the characters. Um, the main character is pretty cool. She's pretty badass. Very much stands up for herself and um, I can see why because she's been through a whole lot of shit in her life. Overall I think I rated this one 4.5 out of 5, maybe 5 out of 5. Really fun, really enjoyable but not for everyone. The next book I finished was actually The Unbound so it's the second book in this um, by V.U. Swab. This is the second book in the archived duology. This is the second book which is the final one because the third one hasn't been published yet slash will never be published we're not sure yet. Yeah I really enjoyed it. I read it 4.5 out of 5. It was a really good continuation of the first book while also being a good semi ending like it ended in a good spot where I still want to see more but I'm okay with not having seen more and I'm glad because I think that if you're hesitant like I was going to the series I definitely recommend picking them up. Uh, because you don't end it feeling upset. An audiobook I listened to this month and really loved is The Project by Courtney Summers. I think I rated this one 4.5 out of 5, potentially 5 out of 5. This is about a girl and she is a journalist and she gets the opportunity to write an article on this cult that her sister actually joined after their parents died. I like cults. I don't actually like cults. I like reading about cults. I find them very interesting and I like this whole idea of religious cults I don't know how to describe it. I just find it really fascinating and because of that I found this book really enjoyable and really good. It is a really good thriller. I like the way things were uncovered and it made very much sense. It seems like the author Courtney Summers did a lot of research into how cults kind of operate because I felt there's realistic elements to things I've read on the internet and in articles and stuff. 
um, yeah, definitely recommend picking this one up, especially if you like Courtney Summers' writing. This one was a lot better than Cracked Up To Be, which I read last month and didn't love. Um, it had similar vibes to Sadie, although being just a straight, normal book without any mixed media, because Sadie has the podcast in it. Yeah. Definitely recommend picking this up if this is something that you're into. Another audiobook I picked up this month was The Lucky Ones by Liz Lawson. This is a book about a girl who survives a school shooting but her twin brother does not and she becomes friends with the son of the lawyer who is defending the school shooter. It is a contemporary romance but it deals more with grief and learning to move past things that are difficult in your life. I really love this book, really interesting, really hard hitting. I nearly cried and I don't tend to cry a lot in books. I rated this one 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, uncomfortable but we've only got two books left. The next book, which was actually a really big disappointment, is Round Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This is her new fantasy series. It is technically high fantasy, I think. It is kind of like Legend of Arthur-esque, I would say. Uh, but I really can't tell you much about it because it's quite forgettable. <laughs> I only rated this one 2 out of 5. I had really high hopes for it. I was really enjoying the first 100 pages and then just something happened and I couldn't tell you what happened after that. I just didn't end up enjoying it in the end and I don't think I'm the only one who ended up feeling like it went quite downhill. Such a great beginning, although it needed a bit more explanation into the system of the world because I feel like a lot of books give you really good insight and you learn as the book goes on but this one didn't really teach you much in that way if that makes sense so two out of five I probably wouldn't recommend picking this one up. The final book I finished in June is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman this is our volume four it is the second to last volume of this it is a graphic novel I read quite a few graphic novels this month is the fourth volume so I can't really tell you much about it but if you haven't heard about Heartstopper it is a comic series graphic novel web series about Nick and Charlie Nick is by Charlie is gay or maybe it's the other way around I always get it wrong about who is who and it's about their romance these two are a really established couple in one of Alice Oseman's other books about Charlie's sister Tori and it just gives you insight into how their relationship started and how they learn to become a better like not a better couple but how they get to where they are in the other book. Um, Charlie is suffering with an eating disorder and it, in general this book has really good representation for how to go about dealing with someone who may be suffering from an eating disorder and also um, just in general Alice has really good realistic representation of different sexualities, identities and other mental health issues well not really issues, just mental health struggles people go through um, because of that I rated this one 5 out of 5 need to do my stats, I forgot to do my stats, I'll do my stats really quick and then get back, it is stat time! I realised I forgot to do them at the beginning so I ended May with 48 books on my TBR and I ended June, which is the end of this month, with 41 books on my TBR. So I only went down by 7 books <laughs> and I read a lot of books but I did quite buy quite a few and quite a few of these were books that I bought throughout the month. So I mean it's not too bad. It's more like 40 because one of them is a book I'm borrowing from a friend and some months I count it, some months I don't. Either way I'm quite happy with how things went. Otherwise my pre-2021 TBR is down to 11 books which is really good. I'm hoping to get through at least 3 if not unhauled three at the end of July and then I have a few other ones I'd like to maybe pick up. I'm definitely a mood reader when it comes to those ones so we'll see how I go with that. Otherwise this has been my July, no, otherwise this has been my June uh, wrap up. If you guys enjoy this please let me know otherwise I will see you guys all next week with another video. I'm hoping to get out my hero video finally. I just had to wait for um, a time to film me wearing the cosplay. Anyway, see you guys all next time with another video. I hit my hand as I was doing that. Thank you.